This video will be about evaluating absolute value expressions. So when we first learned about absolute value, kind of the most basic definition we learned was make stuff positive. If I have absolute value of negative 3, I know that becomes positive 3. Or if I have absolute value of positive 3, I know it stays positive 3. Well, when we move on to more advanced absolute value and we start talking about absolute value expressions, saying just make stuff positive is a little misleading. So let's break it down a different way. Instead of saying, hey, I kept this positive, I would say, don't change it anything. That one stayed exactly the same. This one, we changed the sign. And that's how it's going to be for expressions. You're either going to leave an expression completely alone, so if I had x minus 6, I would either leave it completely alone as x minus 6, or if I needed to, and I'll talk about when we do which one in a minute. First we're just talking about what to do, or I change the sign of everything. That's the only two options. I could not take absolute value of x minus 6 and say, well, that's going to be x plus 6. That doesn't work, and that's where that old rule of make everything positive can be misleading. What we're really doing is not changing. We don't change the expression, or we change the sign of everything. So the question is, when do we do which? How do we know if we change it, or how do we know if we leave it? So let's say we have absolute value of 3x plus 15, and we know x is greater than or equal to negative 5. Now they don't just pick that number out of thin air. They didn't say negative 5, just cuz. What happens if, if, is if I were to go plug in negative 5 into this expression, that is the point where this would come out to be 0. So, they pick that because everything to one side of negative 5 will either all change or all stay the same. And it can change depending on the expression. They'll always find that spot where it would equal 0, so this negative 5 could change. But for this expression, if I were to look at this as a number line, everything to the right of negative 5 will either all stay the same or all change. Same thing on the left. We just have to figure out which. Now, we have to decide first what side are we look looking at. This is greater than negative 5, so we're looking at the right side. Number's bigger than negative 5. I'm going to erase this zero stuff. So I need to just check one of the numbers to see. I'm going to pick a random one, something bigger than negative 5. Well, I could pick negative 4. That's nearby, it's bigger, it's an integer, so it'll be easy to plug in. And I'm going to go plug that into my expression to check. And sometimes you can do this mentally. Um, you don't necessarily have to write out the work. You could just check this using mental math. So we multiply 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. Negative 12 plus 15 is positive 3. So now we look at this positive 3 and say, would I change it or would I leave it as it is? Well, this one, I would leave it. This would stay the same. I don't change anything. Well, for that number, that means the expression is going to follow that same pattern. Square root of 3x plus 15, not square root, I apologize, absolute value of 3x plus 15, when x is greater than negative 5, will stay the same. So this expression simplified is 3x plus 15. Again, that only works for numbers greater than negative 5. It might change if I looked at the other side, if I looked at numbers less than negative 5. So let's take a look at numbers less than negative 5. If I did absolute value of 3x plus 15, where numbers are less than negative 5, again, I'm going to pick a test point just so I can see what pattern should we be following. 
Let's pick negative 6 again. It's near to negative 5. It's an integer, so it's easy to plug in. 3 times negative 6 plus 15. We do our multiplication first. That'd be negative 18 plus 15, which is absolute value of negative 3. So now again, we look for that pattern. On this one, in order to apply the absolute value, I would have to change the sign. That means the original expression, absolute value of 3x plus 15, I would have to change every sign, not just the 3x or not just the plus sign in the middle. I have to change both. 3x is positive, so it's going to become negative. 15 is positive, so that's going to become negative. It changes every sign. And the reason it does is because if we change every sign, if I were to go through and plug in negative 6 now, it would come out as positive 3, which is our ultimate goal. We're trying to get to this positive 3. We just wanted to find a way to get to the positive 3 without the absolute value bars. So this here is your final answer. This here is just ex extra explanation of why it's your answer. Three, negative 3 times negative 6 is positive 18. Positive 18 minus 15 is positive 3. So we still got to the positive 3, but this time without the absolute value bars. And that's the whole purpose of simplifying an absolute value expression, is to get rid of the absolute value bars. So some other types of problems that are on the assignment involve pi. So to do these types of problems, we need to know what pi equals approximately, which hopefully you remember from geometry. Pi is 3.14. So again, we're going to see what pattern this would follow. 5 minus pi, 5 minus 3.14-ish would be 1 point, I'm going to grab my calculator so I don't do this wrong, 1.86-ish. But it's already positive. If that's already positive and I'm taking absolute value, I don't change anything. So this top part, I leave it alone. I don't change anything. I can just get rid of the absolute value bars. I don't even change that negative sign. I know it's tempting to say, oh, absolute value, make it positive. But really it comes down to change it or don't change it. So then I look at the other one, 2 minus pi. 2 minus pi is going to be negative something, negative 1.14, and that one you would have to change. That, to use the absolute value bars, we'd have to change it to positive. So that means on the bottom of this expression, so this minus sign out front has nothing to do with the absolute value. I'm going to ignore it for now. 2 minus pi, it's going to change signs. Every single term inside will change signs. The 2 itself will become a negative 2. The pi will become a positive pi. Now because it is an entire expression and we do have this minus sign out front, we do have to now put parentheses because we're going to have to distribute this minus sign. So this will become 2 plus 5 minus pi over 3 plus 2 minus pi. Negative times a negative 2 makes positive 2. Negative times a positive pi makes a negative pi. So now we just combine any like terms we can. 2 plus 5 is 7. 3 plus 2 is 5. If I could simplify further, I would, but this one will not. So we leave it as 7 minus pi over 5 minus pi. Now sometimes what does happen is sometimes they might like pi to be positive. I'm not sure if they would do this or not. Um, but we could, and this has nothing to do with absolute value, it just has to do with mathematicians being picky. Um, and I'm not exactly sure how the answer will be presented, so just to cover all bases. It may be that you can just stop there. Sometimes they like the pi or the variable x to be the positive piece. So if we factored out a negative 1, this would become negative 7 plus pi. 
Same thing on the bottom, we'd factor out a negative one, that'd become negative five plus pi. Negative over a negative makes positive, so then we could write this as pi minus seven over pi minus five. Again, I'm not 100% sure they would do it that way, but just to cover the bases. Um, so that ends our discussion on absolute value.